Hello everyone, I am Baba Jide Ojo and today I am very excited to share a brief story on how I won one of the most prestigious awards as an immigrant in the United States on my first attempt and not just that. I'm going to share my best advice on how you can best set yourself up for this opportunity just in case you want to travel down this path now or in the near future. So I hope you stay with me till the end of this video. All right, welcome back. So just right off the bat, um, what I'm going to talk about, the grant that I won is called the K99 slash R00 grant. But before I even talk about that, I want to take you back a little bit and talk about uh, briefly about the background of, um, you know, my story. Like I said, I'm an immigrant from Nigeria. Most of you on this channel know that. I came for my master's and PhD. Uh, I started in 2014 spring. And you know, as an international student, it's very, very hard, depending on your field, to qualify, to even compete for any sort of grant, uh, especially when, it's, uh, when, when, when they are federal awards. It's just so hard if you are an immigrant without a green card or if you are not a US citizen. So all through my graduate school, uh, even though I had this idea, even not just one idea, ideas, I just couldn't, you know, test them out competitively during this period. So fast forward to, you know, graduation uh, with my PhD in nutritional science from Oklahoma State University. Well, I, I was privileged to uh, get a postdoc immediately after graduation. And, um, you know, I always had it in mind that I'm going to test out this idea during my postdoc, you know, applying for a grant. However, it is still very difficult because even though I'm now a postdoc, you still need to be a citizen or a permanent resident of the United States, a green card holder. So the first thing I did in order to qualify for this was to, you know, uh, apply for my green card through the national interest waiver. Uh, I've talked about that in another lesson, in another video. Uh, and if you are curious about what this is, please go to bestmanacademy.com and um, check out our resources for this national interest waiver. So that's not the topic for today's discussion. Okay. Now, uh, like I said, I've had this idea during grad school and, um, you know, it just evolved over time and became even stronger as I published, as other published. Uh, so it turned out to be a positive. Okay. It, it was beneficial in the end that, you know, I had more supporting evidence from other people and, uh, also in our group to support, uh, this idea. So. Basically, what I'm saying is as an immigrant, you don't have the chance to apply to most federal grants if you don't have a green card, minimum of a green card. Now, let's talk specifically about this opportunity that I applied to. Now, there are a lot of federal grants that, that, that I love them. I, I don't know if I say a lot, but, uh, you know, if you are familiar with federal grants, they usually use codes to... Uh, describe their grants and the one I applied to particularly is called the K99 slash R00 grant. Now, the K99 R00 grant basically supports promising postdoctoral candidates that have the potential to become faculty, to become principal investigators in, in future. So basically, there are two phases. Okay, the K99 phase and the R00 phase. Now, the K99 phase supports you to complete your training as a postdoc for a maximum of two years. And then within those two years, they expect you to transition to find a position and um, transition to that R00 stage as an assistant professor somewhere in the US, of course. So, when you get that position, you are going to be supported by the federal agency, in this case, the National Institutes of Health, for another three years. So for the first three years of your faculty or assistant professor position. So a total, making it a total of five years support from the National Institutes of Health. Now, if you're not familiar with um, 
how these um, institutes are structured. So there, there is the National Institute of Health. So it's like the umbrella agency. And there are other institutes uh, that are designed specifically for certain research areas. So depending on what your field is, for example, in my case, I submitted my grant to the National Institute of um, Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, so NIDDK, because some of the things I study relates to the gastrointestinal tract, okay? So uh, I'm sure if you are watching this video, you probably are familiar with um, the NIH and um, some of the things they do. Now, the k 99 r 0 like I said, a total of uh, five years support for qualified candidates. And um, so the K99 phase depends on your location and um, and the inst specific institutes you are submitting to under the NIH. But uh, so you can basically get up to like 100, sometimes 120 K supports. And when you transition to your R00 stage, which is the faculty's phase, you get um, $250,000 to support your grant. So each year for the first three years of your assistant professor position. So you get 250K per year, okay? So that's how these things could add up to a million dollar budget for this grant. But luckily for me, I also had some other internal fellowships uh, at Stanford that, you know, supported some of the ideas and, and my current profile as um, a, a, a promising candidate for this particular grant. So. I'm not going to go into too much details in terms of what the k 99 r 0.0 is. I think I did a pretty good job on that. But what I do want to mention is that um, this particular k 99 r 0.0 is for postdocs, right? But there are two different types as well. So there is um, what, what they call the parent K99 and um, the mosaic K99. So the parent K99 is like the, the, the original one where everyone applies to and anyone can apply to and this is unique because it is like i can't remember if there are any other grants like this but this is like the only grant that immigrants without a u.s green card or without u.s citizenship can actually apply to so that's the parent credit k99 the other one is the mosaic k99 and it's basically similar to the parent k99 however this is specifically for those with a green card or those who are u.s citizens okay and there is another caveat to the mosaic you need to have a strong component in terms of when it comes to uh, diversity okay and um apart from being from an underrepresented population you also have to have done some good work in advancing diversity in your field or you know it has to be visible in your journey. So I applied for the Mosaic K99, the Mosaic. So the spelling of Mosaic is M-O-S-A-I-C. So you can Google that to read more about it. So it has a strong diversity component. So if you know you are not very strong with, um, you know, the diversity components, you can apply for the parent K99. But if you have a strong diversity component uh, in your profile, like uh, I did, I did a lot in, in grad school in this area and I'm still doing that right now. So I opted to apply for the Mosaic K99 R00 grant. And um, uh, I submitted in October 11, I think on October 11, 2022. And I got my score sometime in the middle of March, 2023. An award was made officially in July, 2023. So that's really the summary of how the journey went for me okay um, i'm willing to answer any questions in, in the comments if you have any question or you can go to our website bestmanacademy.com and try to schedule a meeting to talk more about this if you are uh, you know have specific questions about this uh, particular grant or any other type of grant in terms of how to structure things and uh, you know profile some advice that um, I've been privileged to, to learn over the years, okay? Now, this is the last part of the video where I want to give you my best advice on how to set yourself up for this opportunity 
if you are going to travel down this path, either for the K99 or for other types of federal grants in the future. Now, the first thing that I would advise is that um, make sure you discuss, okay? Discuss this opportunity with your potential PI, your principal investigator, the person that wants to employ you as a postdoc, the, the, the professor, okay? Uh, so that's, that was one of the things that I did. I made sure that, you know, I brought this up during the interview process, like, hey, I'm interested in competing for this particular grant. I remember someone on the team then told me during the interview process that, you know, this is very ambitious. And I understand that because it's not, the success rate is very low and um, most people even opt not to apply because of that. It's sort of wastes time because you might apply and reapply, resubmit multiple times without getting it. Okay. So, but yeah, I remember bringing that up and someone was like, yeah, this is very ambitious. But one of the reasons why I brought that up during the interview process was that I needed assurance that I would receive enough support to you know, generate preliminary data because I don't have personal funds. So I would have to use some of the funds uh, available for other projects or maybe a startup fund or some emergency fund with the professor. So please talk about that so they can figure out where this money will come from because you would need to generate quality preliminary data to support the research idea that you are going to investigate if you are going to apply for this kind of opportunity. So preliminary data is important. So make sure you discuss that uh, during the interview process and see the extent of support or enthusiasm that the professor has for you. Okay. So the second thing is, uh, you know, either before or during your postdoc, you have to build a solid team of mentors. Okay. This is very important. So there, there will be mentors and the most effective mentors will be those that have experience mentoring a postdoc into a, an independent uh, faculty position. So for example, if your professor, if your PI uh, hasn't really, maybe the person is new and they haven't really, you know, mentored anyone to become an assistant professor somewhere. Are uh, you, you will be best served if you have a co-mentor that has this sort of experience. Okay. So I think they look at that to, to look at the potential of your mentoring team to get you to that next level. So that's important. Now, of course, you will have an advisory committee and these people should have significant experience in some of the major techniques that you're going to use in your proposal, in your grant. Okay. So that's important. So that's my second uh, advice. The third advice that I have. So of course, your idea has to be unique, has to be novel. Uh, novelty doesn't mean something we've never heard before. It could just be, you know, bringing two ideas from two different fields together to solve a problem. Okay. Or to better understand an issue in a particular field. So if you are working in, or if your idea is in the intersection of two fields, that's great. I think they, they usually appreciate that and those kind of ideas are competitive. So novel idea, unique ideas potentially could apply in two fields or it's like an intersection of two fields are great for this opportunity. The fourth advice uh, that I would give you is that, um, you know, give yourself time to really think about ideas, to, to, to really connect ideas and connect your specific aims. You know, for me, I spent almost two, three years just thinking about these ideas, researching, connecting dots. I wish you could see my, you know, my lab notebook, you know, that I love things I uh, scribbled down over the years. And this made it easy for me when I started to write. So give yourself time, be patient with your ideas. Okay. And um, lastly, make sure you use every resources available locally on campus. When it comes to grant writing, most institutions will have uh, departments or units that help with grant writing, you know, in terms of reading your grants, or if you have any questions, you know, make use of these people. And also if there are opportunities to consult with people that have gone through the process, you know, do that as well. Uh, you can never get enough advice when it comes to this very important um, process. Okay. So that's all I have for you. Uh, I'm Dr. Babaji Deojo. And um, if you have any questions or if you really want to talk about some of these things, you can 
put a comment in, in the comment section or you can go to bestmanacademy.com and um, schedule some time to you know to chat about your own journey okay that's all i have in this video i'll see you in the next one